Welcome to Tech World, your quick roundup of some of the top technology news stories from across the globe. This month, we bring you the latest on net neutrality, Google's potential new battle with the EU, and more. For this episode's Hot Topic interview, we spoke to Adrian Bashnonga. First, though, here are your top international stories. The US's top media regulator voted to put an end to rules protecting the open internet this month, handing control over the future of the web to big cable and telecoms companies. The commissioners voted 3-2 to two to dismantle net neutrality rules that prevent internet service providers from charging websites more for delivering certain services. Advocates of net neutrality argue that an open internet has been essential to the creation of today's web, allowing firms like Skype to compete with telecoms providers and Netflix to radically transform the media landscape. US tech giant Google is facing a new fight in Brussels as its rivals gear up to challenge its inadequate response to the company's £2.1 billion monopoly fine. Several of Google's opponents have met with Europe's competition commissioner to express their dismay at the changes made to the search giant's results in response to last summer's fine. The businesses are now preparing to submit formal complaints over the coming weeks. If successful, Google could be forced to pay further multi-billion euro fines or make even more changes to its search results. Amazon could potentially face an investigation by the Advertising Standards Authority following complaints that its premium service is failing to deliver on time in the run-up to Christmas. Amazon Prime claims to offer unlimited one-day delivery, but some users have contacted the advertising watchdog to say it is falling short of what it's promised. Uber has allegedly set up a covert unit tasked with stealing competitor secrets and engaged in undercover surveillance, according to a letter published by a US court. The letter, part of critical evidence in Uber's battle against Waymo, was sent by lawyers representing Richard Jacobs, a former Uber employee who left the firm in February. In the letter, which sparked an internal investigation at Uber in May, but had not been made public until now, Jacobs alleges that tactics were employed through a distributed architecture of anonymous servers, telecommunications architecture, and non-attributable hardware and software. Uber has responded, saying that while it hasn't substantiated all of the claims, its new leadership has made clear that going forward, the firm will compete honestly and fairly on the strength of its ideas and technology. Last but not least, Samsung's Galaxy S9 may not be unveiled in January as initially expected. According to a new report, the upcoming handset, which had been expected to make its first official appearance at CES in Vegas, may not come to light until February 2019. That's it for our top global tech news roundup, but keep watching to see this episode's Hot Topics interview. Hi Adrian, welcome back. So you're here to talk to us about EY's upcoming digital home report. Can you tell us a little bit more about the kind of research that EY is undertaking? Absolutely. We've recently conducted a survey of 2,500 broadband households in the UK, ascertaining their attitudes to a range of technology, media and telecommunication services. As part of that, our field of inquiry has been pretty wide. We've looked at content consumption, we've looked at the state of connectivity in the home, and we've also divided up the market into eight distinct segments which really reflect the diversity of needs in the digital home. Okay, great. So can you tell us a little bit more about the key findings and the trends that you're seeing emerging? The key findings in this year's survey are largely positive in terms of households becoming increasingly digital. We're seeing connectivity being relied upon for home working more and more. We're seeing the smartphone and tablet being used as the primary internet access device in the home. We're also seeing content consumption evolving in new ways. The proportion of households that are using multiple device streaming, for example, has doubled year on year. Having said that, behind these promising stats, um, there are some caveats. Uh, a significant minority of households are actively seeking time away from internet-enabled devices. Allied to that, there's still quite a lot of confusion in the market. A significant minority of households don't actually know their broadband speed, for example. And we're also seeing that on a year-on-year -year basis, um, pain points around switching broadband providers haven't improved. Okay, so with that in mind, what do TMT service providers need to bear in mind to capitalise on this change in consumer need? It's really about understanding these different nuances in terms of customer profiles, needs and attitudes. 
So for example, the importance of a simple value proposition um, is really, really relevant here. It's not good enough just to add new products and features to existing bundle packages, for example. That actually risks overwhelming customers at a time when they value simplicity and they require greater trust from their service providers. At the same time, customer service should not be overlooked. We're actually finding that customer service is an increasingly important attribute sought by customers in their service providers. We're also seeing that there's a significant minority of customers who would pay a premium for better customer service. So in this light, providing better levels of multi-channel support are absolutely critical, particularly at a time when households are warming to new channels such as chatbots. And finally, there are a range of counterintuitive correlations emerging in this year's survey. For example, we're seeing rising customer satisfaction, but also rising propensity to switch. Why is that? A lot of customers who are very satisfied are also very informed, they're also very knowledgeable, so they're ready to switch at the drop of the hat. Many dissatisfied customers, uh, in contrast, actually have had poor switching experiences in the past and may not actually be ready to switch. So drilling down into these specific customer segments allows you to isolate specific areas of demand going forward. Great, well thank you so much for your time Adrian, it was great to see you again. Thank you. That's all for this episode. For more of the latest top tech headlines, head over to www.uktech.news.